This is not one I like. It raised a lot of eyebrows because the criminal in particular, a first grader. Texas police officials are caught in a controversial case in which a student was allegedly beaten and sexually assaulted by two other boys on a school bus. The dilemma? The offenders and the victim are only eight years old. The mother of the alleged victim is outraged with the situation, demanding the boys be expelled from the school. While the police are still investigating the incident, no criminal charges have been filed due to the state's law prohibiting charges on minors under 10. In this legal loophole, how can justice be served? Wow. Yeah, this this is just a tearjerker. I have three kids, and everybody that's ever, any parent that's ever put their kid on a bus, this is your worst nightmare. And I know it sounds really bad, and the mom, of course, of the kid who was assaulted wants to have him arrested, or at least there have been some, some suggestion that he get arrested, and in the state of Texas, you cannot criminalize the conduct of kids under 10. And every state has their own law about what age a kid can be uh, prosecuted. Uh, but I, I just want to caution everyone, as horrible as this story is, jail is not the place for a first no, grader. No. And we do not want to criminalize the acts of a first grader. It's got to be a better way to and, handle and a situation like ask, this. It makes you wonder, when you're, when you're talking about kids at that age, do they even know what they're doing? They well, that's don't. It. They don't they have don't. the mental I, capacity to differentiate so, right and wrong. Not the right? cognitive or developmental ability to recognize the consequences of an act like this. But but also, and this is where, as Travis was saying before, the medical and the legal really mm. do kind of overlap because we all have to take as as you know, state licensed and board certified physicians state laws in recognizing child abuse. And then we have to study child development and child psychology, et cetera, et cetera. I will say my medical opinion is that a first grader does not even know about the act unless he or she has either seen something yeah. or had something done to Which him or her. Which is why, Jennifer, it's important to talk about the parents. Right. What is this, these two kids, what are they watching at home right. on television? What have they been exposed to in their own home right. that might have caused them to be mimicking which or is, repeating something Which is why seen. a number of weeks ago on the show when we talked about trying to create some, some firewalls so you, that kids can't get pornography at home, because kids could stumble upon it oh, online. Like I mean, you could be a kid playing some easy. game and next thing you know, there's a pop-up and mm -hmm. it, it is so ubiquitous now. I don't know that you can blame the parents. I don't know who you can blame. Well, it's not about it's, blaming the parents, Travis, but I think parents have a responsibility absolutely. to monitor Control the environment. what's happening absolutely. at home yeah. and what kids are watching. But who knows what's going on at that school? No, you and know, that's and, a good and, point because the school also has a responsibility, and I hope in this case the kid that was assaulted, obviously lots of therapy he's going to need because he's been traumatized, mm -hmm. but also the kids that were the bullies in the situation, they need counseling and therapy, and, and the community has to wrap their arms around them because we don't want them pushed out and then 10 years later, 15 years later, they end up in the criminal justice system because we didn't intervene yes. when they were first graders and take the necessary steps to get them So it sounds like, from help. your legal perspective, this idea of not criminally prosecuting those under the age of 10, you, you seem to agree in general with that in concept. General. Unless, of yes. course, there's an egregious example. Yeah. The one thing I think we can all agree upon is that this is a, a very difficult oh, situation. Yes. We reach out to the school and they issued a statement to us. This is an excerpt. As soon as school personnel were made aware of the report, we immediately took action and have continued to work closely with the parents and all authorities yeah. involved. That's Student true. safety is our top priority, and we take reports of this treatment very seriously. While state and federal privacy laws prevent us from discussing specifics, I can assure you that all measures within our control have been taken to ensure a safe and nurturing yeah. learning environment for all students. Okay. In the meantime, an adult monitor has been placed on the school bus to guard against any future attack. And that may be the answer there, obviously. And I hope they go I, further. I hope they go and talk to all the kids in that school about bullying, right. about respecting and each other, assault. and about but, your Arena, body, and, and, and keeping yourself safe. I want to ask you a question, because again, it's where the legal and the medical can have a lot of similarities. Sometimes we have to take care of patients who are the, uh, the victims. Sometimes they're the criminals, right? And we yeah. still have to provide the same level of medical Absolutely care are. for them without putting our, our own judgment. social judgment on it. How hard is that for you as an attorney when you have to, let's say, defend the criminal and even sometimes a criminal who may be a child, maybe not eight, but let's say 12, 14? It can be very difficult. Our, our jobs, we have a job, is to zealously represent our clients. And sometimes our clients don't do things, things. we're proud of. 
are things that we feel good about, but even those people have a right to zealous representation. 